Hello and welcome. I'm Brandi Diker, Director of Instructional Design at Mercury Performance Group, where we help businesses solve people problems. Today, I'm going to share three ways you can use ChatGPT to lock in learning. Before we begin, I want to take a look at Bloom's taxonomy so I can explain where these learning tools are going to fall. So the first tool falls within the remember and understand categories. The second tool helps with applying and analyzing. And the third tool, which really helps participants move closer to synthesis, falls in evaluate and create. So let me go ahead and show my screen and jump into ChatGPT. Okay, so once you log in and access ChatGPT, you'll want to upload the document that you're gonna be using as your source content for the learning tools. So you click the paperclip icon and then choose your document. Today, I'm using the FACT model, which is a facilitation and content course that we offer. Once the document is done uploading, the icon updates to the document picture. So next, you'll wanna input your prompt. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste our first prompt. This is for a multiple choice question. So the prompts will be included in our video summary after it's published on YouTube. Some things I wanna include about the prompt are how specific it is. First off, I'm telling it to use the fact model PDF, which is the document that I've uploaded. The next is that I wanted to develop three knowledge check questions. I often use or request more than what I need so that once it provides its responses, I can pick and choose the best elements of each. And then I also tell it what I'm expecting. So I want it to include three distractors and the answer. Um, I use please and thanks and great and things like that in my prompts. It's not necessary, but it's just kind of a, a habit for me. So that's what I do. So then you can either click enter or press the send a message button. So for the first prompt, it might take several seconds for it to respond um, because it's actually extrapolating the content for, from the PDF. Okay, and then it tells us based on the fact model document, here are three knowledge check questions, including the distract distractors and correct answer that we requested. Okay, and also it gives a variety of where the correct answers are located, which is nice. Of course, you can always uh, mix those up on your own. And typically I would also be asking for it to do this for each module, but just to be sensitive of the time that we have together, I limited it to just the three questions. So there, we've got our three multiple choice questions. We've got four answers, three distractors, and one correct answer. So next, we're going to jump to some true-false questions. So again, I'm just copying and pasting the prompt, asking it to please provide three true-false questions and answers, ex including explanations for the false answers. So, you know, we always need to explain why the answer is correct or incorrect. So this gives us that feedback to provide the learners. And you see, it's doing exactly what we requested it to. So for each, each answer, it's giving us the explanation. Okay, so that's another type of knowledge check question. And the last one for our first set of learning tools is a fill in the blank question. So here, please provide three fill in the blank statements, including three distractors and an answer. And I like that with the, the fill in the blanks, it often, and I like that with the fill in the blanks, it often varies where the blank is. It's not always at the end. And again, it's giving us four potential answers and calling out the correct answer. So those are three examples of knowledge check questions, with, which help us on the Bloom's taxonomy, remember and understand categories. So next, let's move up the pyramid to some learning activities, which are with applying and analyzing. So here I'm just copying and let's paste this prompt. 
So just provide, I'm saying pre please provide three learning activities. This is for each module. We're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and just have three learning activities. Sometimes you will get errors. You click regenerate. I found that most often it will just automatically regenerate. So you'll see with the learning activities, there's three different and there are three different focuses of each of them. So first one is a goal oriented case study. Second, sequential connection exercise. And third, a reflection and integration session. So for me, this is a real time saver. So I'm not sitting there brainstorming all the different types of activities that I could include in the course. And then to go a step further, if there's one that you really like, but you're not quite sure of how it should be organized, you can ask it to provide an outline and all of the supporting content for that activity. And what I would do is just copy and paste for activity, activity two, and then I give it the information. Please provide an outline. and supporting content. One thing that's great too that I really enjoy and appreciate is that I could go through and put in the same prompts and still and get different answers each time. So that really creates a variety of options. So here we go. I do find often when I ask for an outline of content, the durations are much longer than what I'm looking for. And so that just takes a little, a little drilling down in the, the prompts that we use. Okay. So that is an example of how you can ask for learning activities. So let's go ahead and move up to evaluating and creating, which helps us with synthesis. So I'm going to copy and paste the prompt for our case studies. So this way, uh, learners will have an opportunity to use all the content in the course leading up to these case studies. And I love how it's broken down by scenario, task, and supporting content. And again, just like we did with the learning activity, if there's one specific case study that you like, but you want to build it out, you can then ask it for its assistance in doing that. So ChatGPT is super helpful in our speed to market and the details that we include in our different activities. So that are, that's our three tools for today. I really hope that you've learned something new and that you're able to use it. So if you could give us a like and subscribe so that you can receive notifications of new videos. Thanks and have a great day.